with the uh, internet. So um, it's already 12.35. Uh, I think we'll uh, take a start now. Um, so welcome to um, tutorial uh, on Unreal Engine. I'll explain what it is, uh, but first of all, my name, uh, my name is Kazi Hamdajan. I'm doing my PhD in uh, robotic research lab in Technical University of Kazakhstan. Um, uh, it's been uh, four years. Uh, my focus is mainly on autonomous uh, vehicles, uh, interaction with the pedestrian and risk assessment. Um, yeah, and um, this is a more sort of interactive session. It's not just uh, like a presentation. So it's a tutorial. You can ask me, stop me anytime you want. Yeah. So I want it to be interactive. Yeah. So you can ask me in between. Uh, the idea of this, uh, uh, so it will be until 12 30. Yeah. We have combined both the sections of me and Jakob. So it will be until 12 30. Uh, first uh, half an hour or 45 minutes, I give a presentation about Unreal Engine. And then uh, we'll go through Unreal Engine and uh, try to make uh, uh, do a small demo, yeah, small practice so in the blueprints. Um, okay, so uh, where is my presentation? So uh, the people who are online, they can also ask question in between if they want, uh, but uh, yeah, they can raise their hands and then uh, you can yes. let me know. Yeah. Or they can write in the, in the message. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the outline of today's motivation as to uh, why exactly uh, we need to use Unreal Engine. Um, then we'll talk about different environments that we have developed in Unreal Engine. Oh, sorry, the environment, how the Unreal Engine, the editor looks like, uh, what are its components. And uh, then we have made these different models uh, of the uh, buildings or world. And what were our experiences with them when we were developing this? And then is the marketplace, uh, what is marketplace? We'll talk about that. And then finally, the conclusion. So the motivation behind uh, uh, simulating or simulation using a simulating tool is that, first of all, um, we have a lot of problems in the hardware. So, I mainly, since I'm working in my area, I'm in robotic research lab. We have a, um, uh, I'm mainly working with an autonomous driverless bus. We have a small mini bus, which can accommodate around six to eight people. And um, the aim of that bus is to um, drive from in pedestrian zones. And these pedestrian zones are, um, places where we don't have this uh, conventional transportation system, yeah, such as uh, campus environment or uh, uh, city centers or uh, museums or airports. So there, uh, since these uh, zones are now being extended and we need some kind of special transportation here, so such, such kind of buses are now coming into these areas, uh, such as Easy Mile or Navia, they are creating such kind of driverless uh, buses. So one of them we also have, which we are working on. So I will try to give this reference of uh, my project mainly. And the problem is, first of all, the problem is hardware. Yeah. Uh, normally when you are testing, when you start testing with the, with the real hardware, you have a lot of problems such as maybe battery issues that, okay, I'm, I'm driving the bus and then we have to charge the batteries. Yeah. Or sometimes my sensors are not working. So this is delaying everything. Yeah. That is why this is one of the reasons that I have to use a simulating tool. Then the other uh, problem is the weather in Germany. Normally uh, throughout the year, it is raining. So if, 
some of your sensors they are uh, sensitive to uh, or they're not waterproof so you cannot test outside yeah so this is another problem so uh, last time uh, i had this stereo cameras or zeds we were using this on the bus uh, uh, we bought them new and they were not waterproof. So I couldn't test, I couldn't go outside the uh, drive outside. But recently, now uh, this new uh, new version came ZED 2i, 2i and uh, this is now waterproof and it can be used. So because the idea was we make the whole uh, bus uh, waterproof so we can uh, uh, drive outside. But then it's not just the rain, yeah. Uh, it could be snow. And then I have to have the snow tires for the for the bus. So and it's not easy uh, to change the whole tires and everything. So there are different environmental issues. Maybe it's a fog there where I cannot detect always the people clearly, and it could be dangerous. Yeah. So these are some reasons that uh, we are motivated again to use uh, simulating tools. Also, uh, the main for me especially, the main concern is the safety here. So, because my vehicle is driving in pedestrian zones and the main obstacle are the people there. So I cannot take risk, I cannot collide, even I cannot touch any person in accidentally, uh, my vehicle cannot touch uh, uh, a person accidentally. And this is, this is gonna create a lot of problem also the problem is that we have uh, these uh, uh, families and little children who are uh, walking around, playing around in these areas. So we have to be very careful. And recently, uh, so what I did is for my vehicle, we had to buy these uh, uh, safety certified scanners uh, and build this whole safety system. So in any case, the uh, system uh, stops. So that is why, so this is, these are factors which, uh, which delays your, uh, your work. So it's better to first test everything in the simulation. Yeah, so what we do is we use this uh, uh, simulation for rigorous testing. So the first idea is normally what we do is we create a, uh, an algorithm, uh, create a concept algorithm, implement it and then we first uh, try that in simulation yeah we see how good this is working where does it fail not that first time we see okay uh we create a, a, a navigation algorithm the first time we don't test it and when we go all the way we have to we have these specific uh, test centers uh test areas in the in, in germany which is around maybe 10 minutes drive, one hour drive, we have to go there and we go there and we implement and nothing is working, something goes wrong. And then we come back. So it's all wasting time. So it's better you implement your uh, algorithms, let it be navigation algorithms, perception algorithms, tune them, uh, make them better. And then finally, you, if you think it's, it's reasonably, maybe reasonably working in, in environment which you created in the simulation, it should then, by changing few parameters, it should then work in the uh, real uh, environment as well. Maybe not exactly, but maybe you have to do some few changes, but at least better than nothing. So yeah, uh, so then, uh, so this simulation tools allow allows us for rigorous testing, trials, uh, uh, create different kind of prototypes. Uh, yeah, also uh, we can uh, work with the uh, uh, non-existing hardware. So such as let's say uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, in the last years, we had this problem of uh, delivery uh, because of COVID, the sensors we ordered came after one, one year around nine to 10 months. So unless they were not here, we can, what we can do is we, uh, uh, create these, we simulate, we create a model of this uh, sensors in the uh, in the simulation tools, simulate them, and then we can work with them with the uh, exactly uh, same uh, uh, data. So this, uh, this really helps. Also, sometimes these, uh, the problem is that some uh, 
some sensors are very costly and uh, then you cannot directly buy it unless you're sure if, if that is really applicable for your application. So it's better first you simulate and you say, okay, maybe for driving, uh, in my case, let's say, for example, driving in a uh, pedestrian zone, I do not need a radar. Uh, I'm good with the uh, radar, but not radar because I don't have the, uh, I don't have to deal with vehicles or big obstacles. It's just the people. So maybe I can also use just a stereo camera, not even radar, just an example. Yeah. So you don't need to buy a 10,000 euros uh, uh, sensor, something like this. Yeah, you can buy cheap sensors and work with that. So this allows this flexibility of uh, doing everything. Yeah? Also, you can change your environment. You can add more in simulation and see how exactly it will work for such kind of uh, fog environment or rain environment. You can all do all this. Yes, yes. In, in your case, if I'm testing software and the difference between in, the, in software hardware and software and the practical, there's not a difference. If we, we, we in tested in software, the accuracy of 90%, but in hardware, we show 75, 60%. It's not going to be a You're right. I'll come to that. You're exactly right. We have this. Uh, I'll come to that. These are further slides which I'll explain now in my uh, uh, next slides. Yeah. I'll explain this comparison and everything. Yeah. And then maybe we can, uh, in the conclusion, we can then talk about this, yeah? Okay, uh, so there are existing different simulation and modeling tools which you can use. Uh, so Blender is actually a modeling tool. It is, a, yeah, you can also simulate, I would say, yeah, but mainly it is used for modeling. Uh, then uh, normally people are using this Unity. Uh, then there is Game Maker. Uh, um, yeah, Star Logo, Gazebo uh, is there. I, a few people have used Ross. Have you people used Ross? Yeah. So they, have you used Gazebo with it? No. Yeah. So this, uh, you can use Gazebo with uh, uh, Ross uh, also. Um, uh, Robot Studio. And then comes the Unreal Engine, which we will be talking about. Yeah. And the community is always there. because So uh, for Blender also, we have this... Uh, uh, RLF community, which is our group, uh, we are using this blender. So we have uh, created or modified different models. Uh, and then uh, there is general community. Uh, similarly, Unity has a, a general community. Um, yeah, uh, Gazebo, uh, this was one of the labs in LUMS, uh, which I was working. So they are, they were using Gazebo. Now I'm not uh, sure. Uh, it was a few years back. Uh, Unreal Engine, we have developed some kind of uh, some sensors and also uh, a large community out there is using Unreal Engine. Uh, Unity is mainly in Java. Yeah, it is not existing in C++. And C Sharp. C Sharp, sorry. sorry. <coughs> Unity, who has used uh, Unity? Okay, so it's existing in C Sharp. Uh, yeah, but it is not in C++. Huh? Uh, okay, so now going further. Uh, so. Uh, the, the idea of this is that many simulations tools are uh, uh, available. Yeah, it depends on you what you exactly want to use. Uh, we will be talking here about Unreal Engine. Uh, yeah, so Unreal Engine is mainly a game developing tool. Uh, maybe you have played some games you have been playing, and this uh, tool, uh, uh, a variety of genres are available, like shooting games or driving games, such as, as such kind of games are available. Uh, most successful video game engine and uh, there was virtual reality films created uh, Henry in 2015 yeah uh, was the first pen which was created and uh, I think it got an award or something uh, yeah so these are few yeah Um, uh, so these are few glimpses of Unreal Engine, how Unreal Engine looks like, and you see the reality. So uh, if you are working, so mainly this workshop was on, is on agriculture, yeah, yeah, it's focused on agriculture. So you see how the plants, uh, so this is all Unreal Engine inside the 
in uh, inside the editor. Yeah. So see the rocks, uh, the reality. I'm trying to show how realistic the environment is in Onion Engine. You see the shades here, all the shades. Yeah. You see this uh, uh, fungus and all the infection, uh, no, sorry, infection, uh, this, uh, what do you call it? Plant diseases. Yeah, so all the plant diseases. So similarly, this was one example for agriculture. The other example is uh, urban environment. Let's say my, my interest, yeah. So how you have this urban environment, the buildings, the reflection, the, the reflection on the floor uh, from the water necessary for the uh, for the cameras uh, I'll show you in further uh, when we're discussing the sensors I'll show you one example so so the shades from the trees and the buildings yeah. So this was, uh, so to show you how Unreal Engine environment looks like, how realistic it is. Yeah, uh, how is it helpful for the robotics community? So it is open source, anybody can download this. Uh, you need to have a um, GitHub account, which you need to link with uh, this uh, Epic Games. Yeah, and then uh, you can download this. Uh, it's uh, uh, installation is easy um, in Linux. Also, we are mainly using in Linux uh, at the moment. I'm using it in the Windows. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, three four uh, uh, lines of code, and you can install it. Um, code, uh, yeah, code is written in, uh, purely in C plus plus. Yeah. Uh, also, you have the availability or the possibility of blueprints. I'll tell you what blueprints. In fact, we will later on when we will uh, do this exercise, small exercise. So, um, we will uh, do this. Uh, uh, we will work in blueprints. Yeah. They're kind of a wrapper, you could say, huh? Wrapper for this uh, C. It's like these are modules which you can easily uh, drag and drop. But the, at the back end, it's all C++. Even instead of blueprints, I can program directly in this C++ language. Um, yeah, there's again very large community. If you have problems, you can uh, post them and you get answers. Uh, variety of models. Uh, there's a marketplace where you can get variety of uh, models. Uh, again, so for you people who uh, are using ROS, um, uh, there's a ROS plugin. Uh, uh, which allows you to uh, publish or subscribe to topics in ROS. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, uh, in our uh, lab, robotic research lab, we are using Finrock, which is uh, similar, kind of similar to ROS in a sense that it is also used for robotics. Uh, I would say um, the difference is like how the communication is done. So in, in Finrock, we use these special ports. Uh, through which we connect and we communicate with different modules. Uh, yeah, in ROS, we have these uh, uh, topics which we, where we publish and then we can subscribe to these uh, topics. Uh, it's been a long time I used ROS, so yeah, but now is this new ROS 2 is available. Yes. Yeah, and I've heard that there's uh, yes. a lot of difference and they made it very, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so the if somebody is interested, they can also use plugins uh, uh, and optimization is easy. Yeah, there is some Python support, but sorry. Yeah, no, no, uh, but um, tomorrow for automation and tool development, so we can develop the scripts that maybe possibly, I don't know, like populating yes. levels or some stuff. So basically, automate workflows that possibly in Python. Yeah. But the gameplay environment stuff is uh, done in C++. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now coming to this uh, Unreal Engine environment or GUI or editor, how it looks like is generally it looks like this. Um, this is the editor which you are seeing here. Um, if I go step by step, uh, I see. So in, uh, in Unreal Engine, this is the... This is the level editor where 
um, where you do all the work, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, you see all the simulation and everything, the models uh, which are there in the environment. Then is the mode panel, which mode do you want to use? Um, light, cinematic, visual effects, which different modes you want to use. Uh, yeah, then is the content browser, your folders, your projects, your plugins, where you want uh, your models, where they are lying. So all this are here in the, you can find in the content browser. Uh, yeah, this whole. Uh, yeah, then is the world outliner. So let's say they call this word, yeah, and inside whatever you drag and drop, you can see here uh, what is lying inside and you can find through uh, this uh, uh, word outline. Like you can select them, press F, and you can directly go to this uh, uh, word, uh, this uh, uh, blueprint or model or mesh, whatever it is. Uh, then is the detail panel. So detail panel gives you the details of all the uh, details of what is inside the uh, world panel, yeah, and inside the editor or world environment. So if I click on something, for example, so it tells me, okay, in in this coordinate X Y Z, where exactly it is uh, uh, situated or located, and how much. Uh, for example, let's say this is, I've selected the sky sphere, yeah, sky sphere. So now it shows me, okay, the location, the rotation, the scale, uh, some default parameters, like as to how much brightness it uh, needs, uh, capacity, I don't know. We can see this uh, in the interactive section. So normally uh, in Unreal, uh, if we have a model, uh, we have few, um, we have its basic skeleton, uh, then um, its mesh, its animation, its physics, and even graph. Yeah. So, for example, if this is a pedestrian or a character in uh, Unreal, you call them character. So it will have its own skeleton. Yeah. Skeleton. A skeleton defines how exactly. It should look like, yeah, because um, based on skeleton, then the physics and the mesh and everything works, yeah. So first, basically, we have this skeleton which has these bones and joints, yeah. And similarly goes for also, um, also uh, vehicle. If we have a vehicle, we need to have a skeleton for that. I mean, this is a a structure which we need to have if we want to have the physics, the proper physics for that, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, normally what we do if I'm creating, if I'm making a model of a vehicle, I give a basic skeleton from the, uh, from let's say Blender, if I'm creating my model, because you cannot create models in Unreal Engine, it's for just for simulation. So normally the process is we create models in Blender and then we import this uh, model uh, into Unreal Engine and then we simulate, yeah. But depends how it simulates. It, it depends on the on the skeleton how the skeleton is built. Yeah. So you need to have this basic structure of the skeleton in the Blender. You have to make this and then import these all components in Unreal. Otherwise, you will have problems, yeah. And then you can also extend them here in uh, Unreal Engine. Then comes the mesh. Mesh tells you, okay. Um, how the structure should look like, yeah, and also you can have material, yeah, like so. These are special, spe uh, uh, these are specific materials. So let's say, for example, this is this is a mesh. This is the whole mesh, and here on the mesh, I have for this particular mesh, I have this material of t-shirt. In this t-shirt, what this material will have some uh, properties, yeah as to how it should look like. So let's say, for example, color, for example, reflectivity or something like this. So if it's a building or a mirror, I will have this reflectivity. If it's a it's a, a t-shirt, I should have this diffused color, yeah, no reflection. Yeah, so so the, the, the materials allows us to have these different uh, properties, yeah. Uh, then we can also set animations, how it should animate, yeah. 
and then the physics of the uh, character or of any model yeah um yeah yeah there are uh, uh, some available classes available uh, some available class for uh, vehicles physics which you can directly use also for characters um we were trying to uh, develop this uh, drones but we couldn't find a better physics for that yeah? also for this um, flow of water we need to have physics yeah so that it pushes object and stuff so i'm not updated about that if we have it now or not mm -hmm. so for what we do yeah yeah and then comes the um event graph or blueprint so it looks such a, like this these are like direct these functions and these variables which you make in c plus plus you already have this uh, you can visualize and you can drag and drop or just right click and directly write and you can directly get the function we'll do this and then you'll come to know what exactly it is going what it is going on uh yeah so any questions up till now any questions from online participants they can uh they, somebody wrote in the chat ah uh, so somebody wrote that what are the advantages of using unreal engine on over gazebo as uh, jose uh, i would say um uh unreal engine has better rendering uh than um uh, more sort of realistic rendering uh than gazebo uh otherwise it's, um Yeah, if we can in general just simulate our sensors better due to this better range. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. It's complex geometry, complex textures. So yeah. For example, imagine a, a lidar sensor, right, that sends out the beams of light, and imagine using these materials that we just discussed for using these uh, properties, like uh, to mention reflectivity or diffusiveness. You could actually use them to calculate the, the reflection strength of um, of the yeah. lidar and um, yeah, what else? Yeah, simulate cameras which are uh, yeah. um, realistic or that realistic. Yeah. And so this comes out of the box, and then gazebo. As far as I know, I'm not an expert in gazebo. But as far as I know, you would have to implement this stuff yourself, like these properties. I'm not sure if it's already uh, because some models are available in Gazebo. Yeah, I don't like this, you know, like I think it's difficult in Gazebo to have like a, a, a t shirt being less reflective than. Yeah, that. this time I, I, I don't, I haven't uh, thoroughly used Gazebo. I just used this uh, small uh, uh, Roomba in the Gazebo. So I'm uh, I'm not sure if for the characters how it looks like, yeah. But if Jose wants to add something, he's allowed to uh, speak, yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah. So. Yeah, but generally to answer the question, it's just a visual, visual and simulation fidelity, which I we think is. Um, yeah, more higher resolution, so to speak, than in the report. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, because I don't want to claim something that is, yeah, <laughs> that is why. Uh, anyhow, but uh, do we have another message? Yeah, okay. So, but yeah, the the you know, the online participants can also uh, share if they have something uh, to share. They can raise their hand and we can unmute them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, going further. And maybe also to add to this, I think that's uh, um, due to the fact that this is a game creation, creation engine, and maybe primarily a content creation engine uh, rather than a simulation engine because we just use it for simulation. Yeah. There's a lot and lot of lot of people who mentioned this also, of course, but there's a lot of lot of uh, assets that are already available. Yeah. So you can think of a, a exotic plant, I don't know, palm tree with coconut and whatnot. I mean, I, the, the Zebo, I don't know if you have it, 
but I guarantee you, you go on this marketplace, you type something in, and you will probably find something more or less at least than yeah. uh, what you're. I mean, whatever the application sure. is, you can find yeah. this, yeah, related to, I don't know, agriculture, robotics. Yeah. We have this Carla now, which is a plugin of uh, Unreal Engine and uh, yeah, for uh, autonomous driving. And so you can directly use that. Uh, yeah, recommended hardware will, uh, yeah, the basic is that you at least need to have a graphic card uh, for this Unreal. Without a graphic card, Unreal Engine uh, doesn't work. And I would say a better graph, the better the graphic card, the better it uh, works. Yeah, I've been working on 1050, so works fine also on 1050, but I don't know, Max mentioned that Unreal Engine 5, needs to have a graphic card with 8 GB of memory. So I was looking, I couldn't find exactly, but yeah. So there's a new Unreal Engine 5 coming. It's already there, I mean, but yeah. So now, uh, yeah. okay, so it's uh, going further um, uh, on the models and features, I'll, uh, we talk about these. So we have developed these different models we have developed ourselves these, some buildings, roads, uh, miscellaneous stuff like uh, benches, chairs, tools, uh, foliage also. Then we have these, uh, we have developed uh, in our lab, we have developed these sensors, cameras, stereo cameras, uh, laser scanner and GPS, also IMUs. Uh, then we have these dynamic obstacles like people and a vehicle. And of course we have uh, 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 implemented or tested the AI algorithms uh, uh, because everybody wants that nowadays. So first coming to building, yeah. So you see, uh, 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 this is the real building uh, near our university. Yeah, this is Devon Fort Plaza. You see, this is a bakery and in Unreal Engine, it, was, it looks like this now. Um, uh, yeah, we created this ourselves. Similarly, this is a building. Uh, this is a student hostel uh, there in Germany. Uh, and in Unreal Engine, it looks like that. So they're kind of uh, similar. Yeah, we have very uh, clear textures. If you can see the textures are very clear. We have variety also. We have flexibility. We can change the size of buildings where we can increase the length, uh, uh, make them wider, uh, different, add different colors, paint. Let's say tomorrow they paint into red and then the the um, uh, model is not trained on this red uh, uh, color, so we can already pre-train. So we have this all flexibility in Unreal. But then the challenges are that if you see, uh, so the texture orientation, if you see here, well, we had this problem, yeah, that the texture orientation is not sometimes okay. Uh, yeah, the perspective view uh, is also not fine. But, uh, but also there's a problem, let's say, this was kind of a fast work. Uh, this was very initial work. We had to create the whole uh, 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 campus of Kaiser Southern and also the, 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 uh, the buildings around where we had to drive. So, but if you see here, so what I did is we had this, um, uh, this model from, uh, uh, from OSMs, we directly imported that, and then uh, we uh, I stick these images from. Can I have? Sorry. So um, so what I did is that in I imported these models in Blender. I took, I went randomly, I took some pictures of these buildings and then in Blender, I stick them into these, uh, these meshes and then I imported them in the uh, Unreal Engine. So it looks like this, yeah. But the problem is if I spend more time, the problem, this here is a terrace, yeah. It, in image, it's a terrace, but actually if you see in Unreal, it's just a box. Yeah, so if you have this depth sensor, you will have problems. Yeah, the image might say, okay, it's a terrace. It might detect as a terrace or something, but it's, uh, but in uh, the depth sensor, uh, we'll say, okay, so, but you can also in, uh, if you spend more time, you can also make uh, uh, 
more detailed uh, uh, meshes of these queries. Maybe you should say how exactly you made it. Because this process was automatic. There was a that was later on that we made it automatic. That was like my first one. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, sort of took it from OSM, which is yeah. the open street map, right? It's like a Google Maps, but open source. And they have these for every building, at least I know in Germany, from these yeah. uh, other places also. They have these models of buildings that are also in this uh, 3D representation yeah. of the country. They scanned the whole city and yeah. then they have this uh, uh, model of this whole uh, city. So, so they gave us the scan data also. So we somehow fused this all scan data with the textures, with the OSM models. Yeah, so the models basically came for free uh, to us and they were already at the geographically correct uh, position. But they were a little bit simplified. So obviously, they didn't model every terrace like you see here or every balcony. Uh, so we had to make some trade offs. But later on, as uh, Hamza already mentioned, we, um, we also improved this process where we could do this automatically. So if we found, for example, a bench in OpenStreetMap, because people do this, right? They walk around and they tag like stuff with GPS positions and um, add this to this open street representation. We could also just load it in at the correct position in, uh, in our simulation. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so again, depends on your application. I don't need a terrace here. I don't need to see this terrace here. I'm not concerned. My bus is driving here, so I'm more concerned of this area. Yeah, so it depends on your application. Yeah, mainly I have this problem of GPS because I'm near the building. So that was uh, useful for me. This was enough for me. Again, if you see the roads, yeah, for autonomous driving in the streets, you can see you have these uh, clean view textures and it's easily configurable. You can directly, uh, so directly attach this material with this uh, print uh, uh, to these roads and you get these uh, directly. We, uh, is there any message online or something? Mm -hmm. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then the challenges with the roads is that, okay, uh, that if I want to have, sometimes they are not so much realistic. So if you see here, it seems like a bit artificial because what I did, did I, what I did is I made a spline and I added this mesh and then it automatically made the whole road. Yeah. So it was repeating these textures somehow. If you see here also, it, you, it, it's repeating, but in reality, if you see the, 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 the texture looks something like this. Yeah. You have, you have this, uh, uh, different shades and it's not just the same yeah so we try to also do this we try to make make such kind of realistic so this is the real image of this uh, what i here i did is i took this zd uh, the studio camera and i built this whole depth with the uh, uh, depth uh, with mesh with this uh, color yeah and i imported this in the in the blender and uh, this is how it looks like uh, i mean in unreal engine it looks like this this is the real uh, uh, image and this is the texture yeah but the problem is if you do it in such a way uh the the uh, view of uh, stereo camera is around 10 or uh, 18 meters so you cannot get the whole area directly yeah you have to go manually to every each and every place if i'm making a if i'm making a uh a map of this room so i have to take the camera roam around every there and then every corner and then I, I can make a map but outside this is not so possible and uh, easy and also then if i do such a thing normally i get only this area and then there are fixed shadows on this uh, road so i cannot remove them also yeah yes your question so you use for stereo vision camera stereo vision camera um, how do we collect your data for stereo vision uh so okay uh first of all uh initially before zedities uh normally we have the studio camera and we use this um point uh uh call this? Not matching matching yeah point yeah. matching and then you get a studio or, but now we are using the zedity uh zedity cameras have you used the zedity camera okay should I show them? I guess I just show them. It's a tutorial. I think it's a it's a um, stereo camera that you can buy as a product, and they have their own SDK with, uh, for which they have efficient CUDA kernels uh, um, where they can calculate the step from the GPU. 
So it's a pretty yeah. Uh, so they have their own SDK, yeah, where you can find the depth. They have this uh, now uh, pedestrian detection algorithms. This is the camera which we are using. So uh, um, and it's about I don't know four hundred uh, euros. Yeah, four hundred. I don't remember the price. I think about six hundred dollars. They went up to. Yeah, must be mentioned here. And uh, yeah, you can use it for different application. You see, the you show it shows the depth. They they have their own SDK. Yeah. So yeah, they, they have their own software, yeah, which, their own demo basically, yeah. and they have this SDK which you can access to your own software, and we have to use the SDK to add this to our framework. Um, you see? So it's also tracking the autometry is also there, the skeleton detection is there, and yeah. so you can use this. Um, I'll go further now. Uh, My battery uh, discharge is going to be done. It's 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 going yeah, so yeah, so you can use a stereo camera. So th these are some challenges when you uh, 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 face them. Yeah. So then some miscellaneous uh, uh, objects which we uh, uh, created. So uh, yeah, chairs, this umbrella, cycle, dustbin. Yeah, I don't know, fountain stuff like this. Um, for me, I. What I normally do, I look into online free uh, websites where I can get these basic models. I download them. Uh, I impl uh, import them in Unreal Engine, uh, sorry, in Blender. And then based on my uh, requirement, if I need a if I need a blue color, if I need this size or different size, uh, I add this and then I import this into Unreal Engine. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, the real world variety not is not yet reflected in our assets. Like in reality, we have these different kinds of bicycles, cycles, different kinds of dustbin chairs. All the all of that we cannot just uh, directly have it in Unreal. Yeah, but we can look into the marketplace if more possibility is uh, available. Yeah. Then comes the foliage. Again, I showed you all the video that we have this uh, um, plants, trees, yeah, uh, different varieties available. Grass is available. It's easily configurable. I'll show you in uh, further uh, um, uh, tutorial. Uh, but the problem is then sometimes to automate such to have such kind of uh, randomness is uh, not so easy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if at the present, uh, I mean, there are there are possibilities where you can do that. Uh, but in such a detailed version, um, I don't know if it's really now possible. Yeah. And then add different kind of these uh, diseases uh, uh, to these uh, plants. Okay, so coming to the senses. So, uh, this was, uh, this is, uh, now I'm showing the stereo camera, which was, uh, uh, which is in Unreal Engine now. And this is the vehicle which has a stereo camera and you can see how the sensor reading looks like, yeah. How realistic these readings are. Yeah. Okay. And maybe important at this uh, stage is that we, um, we don't just take video and then run with our algorithms on the video that we produce, right? We have made those plugins that directly abstract the sensors yeah. that we have. So, for example, it doesn't, uh, it's for our software, it's not a difference if we attach the physical camera to it or we attach it to this Unreal um, simulation that basically just abstracts away this camera. And with those images that we produce, same for LiDAR, same for IMU, they come directly in the same format as they would come from the real hardware. So we can just plug and play and uh, just um, um, try our algorithms exactly as they would run on the real hardware from the simulated one. 
uh, somehow he's seeing is something like this. So from Unreal Engine, we are getting all the sensor data, the images and everything, dev data, and then in Pinrock, or maybe it could be ROS, yeah, through, uh, so for us, it's uh, this uh, uh, ports, which we built in Unreal Engine also, these ports, but in ROS, you might have these publishers, you can subscribe to this publisher, use your, um, implement your algorithm, and based on them, you can control the vehicle, yeah. So similarly, one another example of uh, in the urban environment, and you see there is water, and then you see how we cannot see the depth here. So sort of, I want to show how realistic the data is, yeah. Okay, anyhow, going further on. Yeah, this was, uh, uh, 2D uh, laser scanner example of 2D laser scanner. So this uh, this uh, vehicle has a front laser scanner here for the safety uh, virtual bumpers. You see here are the safe, uh, safety virtual bumpers. You can see the scan uh, 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 re scanner readings, and these are our safety bumpers if something is coming in the front. So the uh, safe, uh, virtual bumpers detects this and then stops the vehicle. Yeah. Similarly, on the sides, there are 2D uh, scanners uh, looking downwards and here. And here we can see is, yeah. And here you can see the, the ground, how the ground looks like. So more sort of, yeah, realistic it is. Again, uh, yeah, GPS, uh, uh, readings, we have these latitude, longitude readings, you have to give an offset somehow. And then uh, we have these GPS readings and based on line of sight, we see, okay, based on visible satellites, we uh, increase or decrease the, uh, the uh, accuracy of the GPS, precision of the GPS, yeah. And yeah. So this is one example where we have these dynamic uh, obstacles also with all the animations. Yeah, this is like, for me, for my application, this is important since the person is talking on the phone and normally pedestrians are unaware of the vehicle and they're talking on the phone. So I need to have this kind of activity. I need to understand or uh, identify this kind of activity. So I know, okay, this situation is now a bit critical. Or somebody, or somebody yelling towards the vehicle, yeah, something like this. So I need to, because my vehicle, our vehicle has this uh, interactive modules where we have this speech synthesis and uh, different displays so we can show them, please, please calm down. Or maybe apologize to build a trust between the vehicle and the, and the person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't need to hardcore every uh, single interaction. Yeah. Also, we added this now. We can add this randomness to the characters. The thing is, um, there are a lot of different possibilities of creating uh, the characters, the animations. Yeah, it really depends on uh, on you how you want for your application. So let's say, for example, initially what I did is uh, uh, I implemented this. Uh, um, so there's one way I make a box. Uh, I make a box. I spawn uh, 100 characters by characters. I mean, people, right? Yeah. So I spawn directly 100 characters which walk randomly. This is one way. Another way is I make a spline and the character is always walking on the spline. So I drive the vehicle particularly on that place and then I see how the vehicle will react. This is another method. There are existing a lot of methods. It's really up to you how you want to use it and what your application is. Yeah, this was uh, so, but then again, one problem is that if you see here, how, so we were testing this one of our robots. Uh, we were uh, driving with this robot and we saw this uh, child was, this child was playing around with the vehicle, you see. 
I want to play again. Play it again. Uh, you you asked me initially the question that how much you your question was regarding the hardware, but in my case, it's regarding the activities. Yeah, I cannot uh, create thousands or infinite such kind of behaviors. In this case, the child is playing around in this way. In another case, maybe or some other point, even he himself cannot replicate this on another day. Uh, he will do something else with the with the vehicle. And in simulation, I cannot put so much kind of so much randomness. Yeah, but at least I can work out my uh, algorithm with certain type of behaviors, and then in the real world, I can parameterize my. Uh, my parameters yeah so that shouldn't be much a problem yeah so again uh this was one um uh, i took just a pre-trained model of semantic segmentation it was segment and uh, i directly applied it was trained on real world uh, uh Im images and i directly uh tested on this uh, uh unreal uh, images and uh, the 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 readings are not bad and yeah yeah you have these uh, yeah you have these shades here where you can see the uh, detector is not able to identify but the rest you see uh, the buildings the gray area the sky everything so uh, you yeah. know But if you train, I mean, if you're focused more on the simulation, you can maybe further train the pre-trained uh, model and then um, um, yeah, add, um, yeah. increase the accuracy. Yeah, also um, for data generation, you can easily label the data and uh, train the, uh, train the pre-trained, uh, network and then maybe increase accuracy so yeah you want to add something to this uh, yeah maybe that's what um, my research was uh, focused on the work um, basically taking it because yeah I assume most of you are related somewhat to the artificial intelligence uh, stuff, stuff here I think maybe uh, but mm, so then maybe you know that the general problem is uh, acquiring data for the problems right this is uh, I would say this is even a bigger problem than the algorithm uh, themselves because it's not easily solved when it was necessarily even if you have um, yeah, brain power, right? So this actually requires physical resources to collect those data. And in some cases, we might not even be able to collect um, such data. For example, think about a scenario where you go or you want to do um certain red cooperation catastrophe uh, regions so you wouldn't necessarily be able to go there and collect the data set right because it's just been, uh, different for the humans themselves so you know, what we use this engine for is basically to leverage the high graphical capabilities and also the fact that we have those abstract representations in the engine so we know where everything is and we know what is what and then we basically just took images and combined this with this meta information to get pixel perfect annotations for our data. So we can generate an image, we provide some tags beforehand. So here, for example, you see those um, uh, pedestrians that we wanted to label, which is uh, the semantic labeling. It takes a long, long time if you want to um, accurately annotate every pixel, probably like three or four minutes per image. And if you have to gather thousands of images, then it becomes, of course, a big issue. But here we were, uh, were man uh, we managed to collect thousands, I think, twenty thousand or so images uh, within a night, and they were per perfectly annotated without any error uh, on the human part. Because that happens too, of course, right? Humans don't always uh, provide the best annotations, especially if you have different human annotating uh, images, because everyone brings in their own bias of uh, what is should be annotated. Now. But here you can define a standard for this annotation and just blast out uh, data on a um, yeah, very efficient way. But that was also pretty cool. And uh, we, are, of course, use them again to train additional algorithms. Then. And that is pretty 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I can show you some examples you see here. So how the performance was posted on the uh, real environment. Yeah, some human detection. Um, then also for action classification, for name, and how in the real world it is. Okay, marketplace. If you go to this uh, Unreal Engine website, and there you can find this marketplace, and then there you can find a lot of uh, um, uh, different environments related to urban, agriculture, water. Uh, yeah, depends. Yeah, uh, some, uh, but some are free, and some also you have to pay for them. So uh, the conclusion is that it's a good simulating tool uh, for simulating the real world environment. Uh, as I already mentioned, there's always a trade-off between realism and the real-time capabilities. Uh, simplific uh, simplification might affect your uh, system. So yeah, if you simplify, let's say the designs, then the in the camera you won't be able to might you won't might be able to detect it. Yeah, something like this. So yeah. Um, again, it's all on you, your methodology, your application. Yeah, if somebody is working on these uh, face features, yeah, you have to have these different face features. You have to add these different, I don't know, colors to the face. And yeah. so, yeah, but the thing is uh, still from my point of view, there's still a long way to go to completely rely on simulation. I cannot do that. Okay, today I drive, my driving is perfect in the simulation. And I tell professor, I'm done with my work and let's go test the, my algorithm on the real world environment. And I, it will never directly start driving. Yeah, whatsoever I, uh, I try to make the environment as best as possible. Yeah. So don't expect that. Okay. If I completely, I've done completed, I've, I've done everything on the Unreal Engine and, uh, it should work completely hundred percent on the real uh, robot. No, it's not the case. I mean, for me, it's never the case. I don't know if somebody can really achieve this. Yeah. I think that is then, is it a twin or something? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. So. Yeah, so now, yeah, we'll go to this uh, small, uh, very small um, exercise. But before that, any questions you want to ask? Anything, I mean, discussion? Online, if there's something you want to ask? Screen share or something? Mm -hmm. No, uh, ye... no, 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 So now my uh, Unreal Engine uh, should be visible, but I'm not visible. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so this is how uh, Unreal en Environment looks like. Uh, mm, you're already now familiar with uh, how the GUI is, yeah? So this is the, if you see here, this is, I mean, normally who plays uh, Counter-Strike or I don't know, IGI. Yeah, have you people? So it's like this, the 
the way you can navigate into this uh, word. Yeah, I'm old. Far <laughs> uh, cry, maybe. Far cry. Yeah, that is also old word. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the way you can navigate in the Unreal is the way you play your games. Yeah, like this uh, normally. So this is uh, the way you navigate. So normally, if you open you uh, if you open a new project, you find uh, something like this. They have kept a random model here. Let's go to files, open new level. Yeah, they have this empty level default time of day, VR basic, virtual reality, but I'll just open at the moment this because I'm using this normally, if you see here. And now this is where the you, you start, yeah? So if I play, you'll always start from here, yeah? Normally now I'm simulating or let's say I start and then you will always start from this um, player start. If you see here, this is player start. Uh, I normally delete this because I don't need this. So deleting is not so uh, difficult. You just press this with a left click and just press delete. You can delete it directly. Yeah. Control Z and it comes back. Yeah. Also, if I go here, right click, am I able to delete it from here? No. Okay. Just click and delete and it goes there. Yeah. Uh, now if I start, uh, there's no player start. So I just start from wherever my uh, view was. Yeah. Uh, if I press escape, I can just stop the simulation. Uh, also, if in the world setting, uh, if I choose game mode, so if I go to game mode and I choose this uh, uh, first person game mode, it was. So you see, so this is like a game development tool. Yeah. As I already mentioned, and you can, these are, these are some blueprints which are already available. So you can directly use and this I fall now down. Yeah. So where is it? Yeah. Um, I'll remove this game mode. I mean, this is how games are created. It's not so difficult. I shouldn't be saying that it's not so difficult otherwise. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Please ask. Uh, Sangu, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to know about uh, a sort of a plant disease. Uh, I'm new to this field, so uh, I have some experience of working on plant disease detection and use some uh, AI algorithm for semantic segmentation. Can't hear. Uh, Sorry, I'll, just I'll... a moment. I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me again? Just a, from your PC. Okay. Can you speak now? I'm audible again. Yeah, from my speakers. Yeah, just same. Okay. Okay. Please repeat your question. Yeah. Uh, I was asking uh, that I have a uh, uh, little, little, a small experience of working on uh, plant disease detection using few algorithms like semantic segmentation and detection algorithm like YOLO. Uh, uh, as I work directly on the data, I collect some data, synthetic data, and then use the algorithm. Uh, I want to know that should I start using this tool for my agricultural projects or uh, is it okay that I should go directly for the data because there's confusion in my mind. So his question is, let's mute. Guy. Yeah. His question is that he uh, is, who is this? Usman. Usman. His question is that he's using this, um, he's working this plant diseases and um, he has some data also available. And if he should uh, you directly uh, start with the real data or he should be using the simulation. I would recommend, uh, from my recommendation, he if he has the existing da real data, he should directly use that. It's better uh, because in the simulation, uh, that particular uh, disease, creating that particular kind of disease and then implementing the whole uh, field uh, would 
this, uh, I would say this is basically based on your requirements, right? Because um, if you say, for example, that you want to detect your diseases on a sunny day in such um, environmental conditions where you have collected the data set, then obviously maybe the simulation won't be a, a high benefit for you, right? Because you already have the data. But let's say you first perhaps want to robustify your system and check if it works also under our different weather conditions, and you maybe don't have the resources to go out to the field again and um, collect data again, then it would be beneficial, of course, to, to somehow combine it with the simulation, right? And maybe you could even do both, like right? you could uh, take the the images that you made in uh, the first place and use them, for example, as textures for the plans uh, in the simulation. And um, yeah, so basically create like this hybrid approach. Yeah. yeah. But basically, the answer is it depends. It uh, depends on what your requirements are. And if you just wanted to work on a sunny day, then uh, in this particular scenario where you want to uh, gather the data, then it probably enough to just gather the data, but to do more to accept uh, your stuff. Um, yeah, simulation could be beneficial. So maybe in your case, if I were you, I would start maybe uh, simply with the data I already have. And then if I want to do more, if I want to robustify, if I want to extend, then I would maybe take uh, the step to the simulation then to extend it. Yeah. Uh, so, Osman, I hope this answers the question. So, going further, um, before we go, let me just show you how things are available already. So, we bought this uh, uh, one environment where I go to maps and I open this environment, don't save. And, sorry. Not this one. Well, this is one example which you can see, but let me go to another one. Barnyard, maybe a maps overview, just to see how it looks like. What's this one? You can hear the fan of my, yeah. Also, better for the geospatial, better as well. I mean, basically, we are creating a virtual world, so maybe there is no such requirement like uh, uh, placing uh, uh, operating the building at specific latitude and longitude. But uh, is that uh, so that uh, genetic data is also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so I showed you in the sensors where we have this latitude and longitude information also. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like an offset to this this X, Y, Z in the editor. Yeah. So yeah, we also know uh, for um, in Germany there is a few space of data available as far as resolution, so we can uh, go to the Ministry or whatever, I don't know how they're called, and they provide high profile data. Digital elevation map. Yeah, yeah. digital elevation map. And uh, we can just easily know that we have done that several times where you just uh, took this elevation data to reconstruct some real fields of the mm -hmm. And I think we also did that for kind of stuff, right? So I think it also has a high profile. So our, our yeah, it has. Thank you also did this way. So if you see this, uh, in environment yeah so let's say for example for example your application is that simply you have to drive on this road with a vehicle you don't need to make this environment you, the environment is already existing you can just directly buy or download free from the marketplace uh, open this environment add your add your vehicle at the moment i don't have a vehicle let me see if there is a there is a vehicle available i think they have a vehicle but that won't work um no problem. Um, 
yeah uh, meshes just let me see vehicle prop so normally if you have a vehicle this won't work this is just a mesh but i can just place it here and then i can start with uh, driving on this vehicle yeah so it shouldn't be a problem yeah and normally your your games are like this that if i add this uh, first person game mode yeah it's like this so you normally play with these uh, kind of environments well, so you play like this. Uh, so these environments are already available there, yeah? And you can create your own also. And if you want to, let's say, uh, where is the road? If you want to like add this vehicle here, or let's say you want to see if the vehicle is, uh, has crashed. So you can uh, change the rotation by pressing E. Uh, you can just change in X, Y, or Z. So I just change it like this. Just put it, and then if I play, yeah. If you're so, so if you're like driving, the vehicle is crashed on the road, or or you can add something more. Maybe add this trailer on the road if it's blocked. So I'm just telling you that according to your application you want to test your algorithm for this kind of vehicle if if this view if you're driving in this vehicle is somehow like this crashed and if your model will detect this vehicle or not or what your autonomous driving has to now decide in this case yeah so these are available so these are few examples uh yeah available i'll go again back to this new uh level i'll show you some more possibilities now don't save yeah again i'll delete this i don't like this okay again i select this uh, uh floor i want to scale this floor i press r i press r it changed to the scaling factor and then on uh on if i want to increase on x y i can go here if i want to increase on uh y z i select just this one but since I just want to increase uh, the floor on X, Y, I select this and just move my mouse left and right. Yeah. And I can increase it. So it's not a problem. Yeah. Or if I want to increase it from a uh, detailed panel, I just click this. This is 12. I, uh, in X axis. So this red one is X axis. You can see the, the coordinates here. So in X axis, I want to increase it maybe hundred and it's increased like this. Just, uh, yeah. So there's no such, uh, um, not a big deal, yeah? So the same for every object. So every object. Could have done the same tractor. Tractor, the... mesh, everything, whatever I want. This is like almost a transform. This uh, transform uh, parameter is the same for everyone, yeah? Okay, uh, yeah. I'll do undo, control Z. I go to, uh, and I go back. Again, I increase, uh, sorry. This was by W it's, uh, by W I can select the, uh, location, but now I go again to, I don't want to rotate. I want to increase. I go to R and I again move my mouse and then I can increase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I want to put some foliage since this is a uh, workshop is related to agriculture crops and stuff i want to put some foliage yeah crops on my uh, uh, floor there are again there are several ways of doing it yeah i'll show you some tricks and tips maybe uh, there's a there's a go to modes you can see this yeah? go to modes go to foliage yeah if i go to foliage here there is uh, available, you have to drop a foliage here. You have to drop a mesh here, yeah? Now, if I go to my foliage, I go to, I have to find a foliage. So go to blueprints, it's up to you, yeah? So in my navigator, I have, I know my meshes are lying here. So I want to add these meshes uh, randomly on the floor. What I do is I drag this, leave it here yeah i want to also add this um, 
flower or whatever it is corn i drag and just uh, leave it here yeah now i select this and you see this if uh, there's a yeah it has changed i don't know what you call this brush. brush let's say yeah yeah let's say brush and if i start clicking it will uh, uh, brush the meshes if i go near see let me slow down i can slow down my camera from here it's on 5 i slow down for you so i can go to 3 and now you see i am slow and here this is my brush and i can just put make a field here like this so you see it's it's not so uh, these are some tips and tricks now here and now i i've selected both yeah if if you go here both are selected if i just want to uh, put the this one i deselect this and then i have uh, i have just this now this type a yeah let's say make it type a you see here yeah, maybe uh, you, you will see that they are all not the same not quite the same so they always come in different rotations. yeah i can do that also yeah uh, let's go here here i can change the density so if i increase the density now you see i've changed the density it's uh uh yeah the density is increased the definition of density everybody knows yeah <laughs> So density increase, I want to keep the radius maybe a bit more maybe so that they are a bit far away maybe. So I think within this density, it's not possible, but. Yeah, it's probably, probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, because of too much. Uh, so now the rendering is taking too much time. Should I make it new again? I'll just start again. Oh, they are the floor, no? Are they? No, they're not. Yeah, I think so. Let me uh let's put it, I don't know, 100 works. Yeah. You see, on exactly 100 uh uh radius, every uh, plant is now uh, randomly scattered on 100 of its radius. And if I go back again, I'm I'm still pressing the left click. And if I go back, it's not coming again because it checks for this hundred radius. Um, yeah. Uh, there was one more thing. You can erase it. Erase it also if I press uh, shift. If I press shift now, but since I've just selected this one, so if I press shift, I can erase them. But this won't be erased. Okay, this is also erased. Yeah. Okay. I uh, thought I need to select this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shift. Okay. This is not erased now. Yeah. I didn't mark it. I select this and I remove this. Yeah. So the, the, yeah. Okay. So this one is erased, but this one is not erased. Yeah. So these are different possibilities. It says uniform scaling. I can do it freely scale minimum how much maybe minimum in x axis uh so if you scale them in x and y the the plant won't look like a plant yeah it won't it will be my it might be increase in x or y maybe i'll just increase in uh, a z axis i make it from maybe 0 0.1 to maybe i don't know 30 yeah uh the Unreal Engine is normally in centimeters, yeah. Uh, they have unreal, yeah, yeah, centimeters. Yeah, centimeters. So if I now start placing, you see, they're randomly with different uh, Z uh, 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 scaling. Let's go near and see, you see. I can't see the... Why is the not so much changing? Should I increase more? Maybe I don't know. <coughs> hmm? Seems like it's not changing.
Okay. Placement also, there is an offset of Z. If I play, uh, change this offset, maybe. Why is this not changing now? By the way, uh, I right click and then navigate, yeah, through W A S T, yeah. So I can navigate. If I leave my right click, then disappears this brush, and then I can left click and directly brush. Uh, yeah. There are different uh, parameters available: cast, shadow, effect, dynamic, indirect lighting. There are several of uh, parameters. Honestly, I I exactly don't know all of these parameters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Collisions, you can set collisions so that if uh, your vehicle should collide, yeah, uh, with this, uh, so how uh, should I detect, yeah, the collision? Yeah, physics, virtual texture, yeah. Again, uh, so yeah, okay. So this was one way of painting your uh, foliage, yeah. Maybe also uh, two things. To that, you see now in the upper left row, I see there's in the, the instances of what should be um, painted, and you see we have now 1,700 instances of the yeah. set, and like what 3,000 instances of the big set. So we have overall uh, more, more than 5,000 plants now on the scene, and it's still working quite nicely on the laptop. So this uh, instance, the storage uh, tool allows for a very efficient creation of the pop. Yeah. You know, they use several clips behind the, uh, under the hut to, uh, to make this very, very efficient. And um, a second thing, maybe it's called lineage tool because historically they have used it mostly for foliages, but it's not limited to pop. Uh, or a foliage, right? So he could, for example, put in stones in there, or maybe, I don't know. If you have a, a yeah, I can uh, add maybe one. Yeah, let me add. Like, for example, uh, uh, urban scene could also add like leaves on the floor from the yeah, trees, so or, I, I don't know, like trash or whatever. So, everything that can be randomly cut yeah. and um, it's a yeah. small instance. If you want it to be efficiently placed in the scene, you can have many thousands of those objects. You can use this um, foliage to, yeah, I, I need to place apples. Yeah, I'll remove this. And now I play throw apples on the field. If I go near, see? Yeah. So you can add, I don't know, I want to throw this on the on the floor. I add apples and this <laughs> pipes, and now I throw these pipes, yeah. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, due to these uh, things that I just mentioned, um, that they are, because um, I think internally in, uh, in the engine, all of the objects that we place here, they are combined to one single mesh. And that's why this is, um, this can be so, um, so um, efficient, right? Because if everything is combined, and they do most of the calculations with one more on one side for all of the objects. But that is, uh, for example, if you think about your sensors and the data generation part that I was talking about, it makes it a little bit more difficult because you lose the per instance information about those things. So uh, for, uh, for example, for semantic segmentation, that would be fine. Like you still have like the same uh, mask for all the people and the trans in the images. But if I suddenly want to insert that uh, information, Based on the data that I have available now, I can't really um, yeah, tell those instances apart based on the metadata in the end. That's just one uh, thing to, to um, remember, maybe the more to this efficient kind of thing. So they always do some kind of simplification uh, to make this efficient. Yeah. But I personally would not use that. <laughs> this is just for the uh, last, last touches. But, like, let's say, uh, why? Because now if I'm painting this yeah and uh, tomorrow i want to just remove this part from my environment if i go to select 
when I select this, 